The world is a vampire. Santa Drain. Secret destroyers. Hold you up to the flames. And why do I get. Ladies and gentlemen. As I mentioned in the last voiceover, this week's been a little screwy. Got a little stomach bug or something weird on Tuesday. So normally Tuesday's lower body squat emphasis. So I had to move that to Wednesday. Did that by myself, um, didn't film it. And then today is normally upper body focused with an extra squat. But since I had to push that other day forward, Wednesday, I didn't want to squat two days in a row because I got a heavy deadlift and squat day Saturday. Put that in your calendar, calculate it out, it'll make sense. So today we only did upper body, no lower body focus. Um, felt pretty good considering I had that little stomach bug, lost some weight and I haven't been eating perfectly the last three days. Uh, just feeling a little empty, a little weak, frail, petite, opposite of husky, small. So we benched uh, 345 for two, 365 for a pretty decent one. Then a couple back down and doubles, trying to be faster. Uh, I, I went a little bit lighter today because I just didn't want to grind as much, again, because of the, the, the physical fatigue. Um, so I did 315, I think, for two doubles, and then 335 for another double. Moving my grip in a little bit as I'm getting um, a little skinnier. Sometimes it feels good to uh, have some meat touching each other. So uh, I can feel my back being a little bit tighter when my grip's a little bit closer. Uh, so then it's just gonna be an argument over time whether I wanna reduce that range of motion, get a little bit more uh, pectoral action with a uh, wider grip, or if I want to keep it a little bit closer and get a little toiter. Uh, moved on to some overhead, and I still don't even know what the weight I did. 195 for a couple sets of three. Felt actually pretty good considering, uh, you know, my best overhead's still probably 225, 235, uh, and I've been doing it more consistently, but haven't really been focusing on it. Um, so 195 for a couple triples with some biceps, of course. The hammer curls, trying to get arms because they're small to begin with and I don't want them to go away as I'm dieting, so I'm doing them two to three times a week. Hammer curls in between that. Then uh, some hanging leg raises for the abs and some just some band push downs. Uh, again, because I'm trying to do arms multiple times a week, I don't want uh, to go heavy or a lot of impact so I don't get any tendonitis or any flare ups So I decided to do band push downs, still get some blood, um, but the impact or the harshness on my bones doesn't feel as bad. Uh, I'm out of breath, don't blame me. I need some food. I didn't eat much. I had some fiber one cereal. That's about it. What else you got for me, coach? We're gonna answer some questions. Stick around. Or what you can do is comment below right now. Give this thing a thumbs up, subscribe, and ask your questions below if you want them answered in the next video. How do I like the Legacy Lifters? I like them a lot. Uh, so Reebok uh, in the past had a lower heel, kind of a, a multifunctional, um, lifting shoe that wasn't necessarily made for weightlifting or squats. Switching to Legacy Lifter has been gold for me. Um, I don't really need the higher heel per se, but the sturdiness and how stiff the shoe is uh, feels great. I like the double straps. You guys might notice I don't really even lace my shoes, so I'll just strap them up. Um, they're a little bit pricey, but they are an investment. They'll last a, a, a real good while. So um, I am obviously sponsored by them. So take that for what you guys want, but I do enjoy them. Even if I didn't work them uh, with Reebok anymore, I'd probably still squat in those shoes. Want to test? Yeah. So if you want to test your PR, I've read a couple questions on how you should maybe warm up for that or something. Um, it is a little difficult because you're a little bit taking a guess, but hopefully if you're following a good program, a good progression, you have a good idea of the range that you can hit either based on previous doubles, triples, sets of five, maybe an AMRAP, something like that. Um, one suggestion for kind of all warming up is uh, you want to start with a general warm up, something like a uh, assault bike, something of that nature, even lunges, something your general body weight up and then maybe something or body heat up uh, and then something more specific. So, you know, push ups for the bench or again, lunges or air squats for the squat or even just squatting or taking the barbell for the bench multiple times to find that groove. Uh, beyond that, you know, just a, a general good rule of thumb is to uh, jump about 10% jumps all the way up to about 70 or 80, maybe even 85%. And then from there, 5% jumps are normally a good gauge. And that's 5% on your max or on your estimated max. Um, you'll have to do a little bit of math, but generally speaking, you know, I'll take the bar for, if I say I'm testing my bench, I'll take the bar for one or two sets of 10. I'll take uh, 135, uh, a couple sets of 10, and then I'll probably move to sets of five uh, for, to about 225. And then from there, as long as I feel warm and good, I'll probably only do singles or doubles, again, all the way up in 10% and then 5% increments. And it'll be something very similar for the squat and the deadlift. Uh, why do people give the cue on overhead press that shrug at the top? 
So I think shrugging at the top uh, often comes from weightlifting and the snatch. Don't quote me, because I'm no weightlifter. Um, I mean, I lift weights, but I ain't no weightlifter. Uh, it comes from the snatch or the, um, uh, the jerk, um, or even push press, and it slightly works for the overhead press, except for when the snatch and the jerk, overhead stability is like the number one key. They're not even pressing that movement. They're literally throwing the bar and then trying to catch it with elbows and shoulders locked. And to get that stability, they're trying to flex not only the deltoids, but their traps also to con control that shoulder capsule. In the overhead press, it's an okay cue uh, because stability is always gonna allow you to be stronger than instability, but uh, it's not a cue I necessarily coach or use a lot. Um, pushing up and back, um, trying to push in a straight line, keeping your stomach tight, keeping your glutes tight, flexing your quads are all things you try to do in the overhead. If at the top, yes, you wanna fully lock it out with your elbows uh, extended, but I wouldn't focus on it too much. And any weightlifters who actually know what you're talking about, you can comment below and tell me if I'm correct. I'm a little bit biased. Do you keep your questions in? I guess maybe you can't hear it. Where to learn about powerlifting, best resources, etc. I'm a little bit uh, lucky, a little bit spoiled where a lot of the resources over my last eight to 10 years, I've been able to meet in person, not only interview, train with, uh, and pick their brains or, or have them coach me. You know, working with Jeremy Hamilton, some of these elite, 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 elite lifters has been uh, a blessing to me. And that's kind of where I gained the majority of my knowledge. Uh, as a young gun, uh, I just searched the internet and soon, if you read enough, uh, you'll find out who's more legitimate, who makes more sense, who has more experience, um, both in the maybe science and in the application of strength training. So, you know, T Nation's a, a source I read a long time ago, bodybuilding.com's a source I read a long time ago. Uh, I listened to multiple podcasts uh, over the years, uh, as well as uh, just kind of read anything uh, to do with lifting, getting stronger, faster, bigger, uh, in the weight room. So, um, you know, Google is obviously great. YouTube, there's a lot of great sources. If I had to go straight like doctory, doctory stuff, sciencey stuff, check out Alan Aragon and Brad Schoenfeld, Eric Helms. Those are three of my favorite guys that I've um, met all except Alan. I'll meet you, buddy. We're gonna meet. Um, and it's been uh, awesome to meet them as humans after reading and learning so much about them. Uh, if you're in the bodybuilding realm, Alberto Nunez is a great source. Uh, hopefully I've been a little bit of a source for you guys. Omar Isof, uh, and some of my homies on YouTube as well. Um, yeah, search them out, search them out. Find a mentor is a great way too. And then also just doing it yourself, reading, then applying, reading and applying. You do that for multiple years, you master your skill. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this video. New video, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up. Catch you guys later.